Indeed, it is the one-year anniversary since the violence and the war began in Gaza. Let's talk more about that. Reza Khan Zade is a West Asia expert. He's now joining us live from Washington, D.C. DC. Mr. Uh, Khan Zade, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome to the broadcast. I just want uh, uh, to ask you, it's one year since the war in Gaza began. Do you think there are any lessons that have been learned? And if they are... What are they? Well, thanks for having me. Um, lessons learned, I believe there are a lot. Uh, to go through them, I think, would take up too much of our time on this program. But I think the most important lesson uh, has been shown that Israel uh, does not have the support like it used to on the world stage, uh, with the exception of the United States and perhaps a handful of other Western countries. Uh, the vast majority of the world has seen what Israel is capable of and the extent to which they're willing to go to reach their objective, which in the case of Gaza and West Bank, and now we're looking at Lebanon, is essentially genocide. They're willing to exercise military strength as well as starvation tactics and really any means at their disposal to try to eradicate um, what they say is Hamas and Hezbollah. But if you if you look at many of the human rights organizations, especially those even inside Israel, mm -hmm. that these attacks are on the Palestinian people. Uh, so that is the greatest the greatest lesson learned, I think, from from this past year, unfortunately. Mr. Reza, let's talk about that uh, point that you made last there. Uh, we are seeing a genocide indeed. Israel has vowed to continue with their military action, as they are calling it. That's what the Prime Minister of Israel is calling it. But why is the world not stopping Israel? What's the problem here? The problem is quite simple, in my opinion. It is, it is the United States and specifically Washington, D.C., and currently President Joe Biden, um, they have essentially, or the, the White House, President Biden's administration has the sole power to stop Israel, and that's simply by cutting off their support for, for Israel's military capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, for as long as we have seen in history, the, the United States, and not just President Joe Biden, every U.S. president administration has bankrolled Israel's military capability. And with what's going on right now between Israel and Iran and this back and forth, I guess, aerial bombardment, if you want to call it, that they're, you know, that Israel and Iran are, are displaying against each other, uh, it's going to come to a point where both, you know, one, if not both, you know, militaries will run short of you know, aerial projectiles, whether it's, you know, ballistic missiles, drones, what have you. Um, and at that point, Israel will turn, you know, will turn to Washington, D.C. for more bombs and, you know, more military capability. And that's the point when hopefully Washington, D.C. can say, we may give you more, you know, weapons, but it will come with stipulations. Because at this point, there's been no stipulations. It's been a blank check. Washington D.C. has turned a blind eye to what, to what you know, you know what's been going on. Um, so unfortunately, the world can can do so much, but at the end of the day, it is it is Washington D.C. who can who can stop Israel. As an expert on West Asia affairs, there are those who say that yes, if uh, if uh, America stops arming Israel, then this war will still go on because. France did that, and Netanyahu was angry at, Fa at France and other Western powers, as he called them. He said, it's a shame that France or French President Emmanuel Macron has stopped arming Israel because he's fighting terrorism. So if they continue to arm him, they will be aiding him in fighting terrorism. So what do you tell those who still believe that even if the United States stops arming Israel, the war will still continue. 
the war most likely will continue, uh, but the shape in which that it will continue will change. Mm -hmm. We've seen how precise Israel's military, particularly the IDF, has been when it comes to assassinations, especially with Iran. Um, the way that they assassinated, um, you know, certain individuals of Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, either in Iran or in Lebanon, they have the capability to be very precise in their attacks if their sole purpose is to fight terrorism, which in this case is Hamas and also Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. But the capabilities they have up to this point has been, like I said, a complete blank check where they can use any type of military that they want, any type of you know arsenal that they want, and it's essentially just dropping bombs indiscriminately on homes, hospitals, um, safe zones, um, migration camps, and if we're able to put a stop to that, to where there's a specific type of military capability that they can use on specific targets, mm. to where it's more targeted and more more focused, then we'll see less human casualties, less deaths of children, senior citizens, and women, and more of a of a you know coordinated attack against. Hamas and Hezbollah. And then, of course, the counter argument is, well, they have underground tunnels and they use human shields and they're, you know, hiding out in these in these in these hospitals and in camps that that to a certain point may be true. But after one year, it seems to be more of a talking point from the Israeli government rather than a military strategy, because even military experts inside and outside of Israel have pointed to the fact that there are other ways in which you can fight terrorism you know, with those two being Hamas and Hezbollah without having this massive 40,000 plus human casualty. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Mr. Reza Khan Zadeh is a West Asia expert. Mr. For all the latest news, download the We On App and subscribe to our YouTube channel.